but frankly, there's nowhere else to start, is there, but then with this, at Tottenham's 2-1 win over Liverpool and this hugely controversial incident. The referee's body, PGMOL, have admitted a significant human error was made after VAR failed to overturn the incorrect on-field offside decision against Luis Diaz. Still with us? I hope you are. Denying Jurgen Klopp's side the opening goal. Now, the video officials believe the goal had been given on the pitch and that actually was one of a number of refereeing decisions questioned after the game which saw two red cards for Liverpool and despite that they nearly held on to a point but Joel Matip's own goal in the 96th minute gave Spurs the win. Now I'm going to discuss all this with Miguel and Darren shortly but let's just remind you if you haven't seen it of what happened. So Mohamed Salah plays in Luis Diaz but after he scored the goal the offside flag was raised by the assistant referee automatically possible goals are checked by VAR but following a very short review period in which a replay was shown without lines as you see here the decision overturned something we now know occurred in error and look here's a reminder of what happened what we actually witnessed here in detail didn't see them on the TV but we understand the VAR officials did draw the lines when reviewing the goal but the error centred around the VAR having the belief that the on-field decision was given as a goal and not offside. So, the VAR gave a check complete message to the referee. Check complete, he says. So, the on-field call of offside stands even though the VAR thought he was confirming a Liverpool goal. Jurgen Klopp, surprised by the speed of the decision. It took just 40 seconds between Diaz's shot going in and play restarting following the review. And after a restart, that phase of play is over. Then shortly following the game, the PGMOL released their statement, admitting this error had been made. Whew. Now, I know you've got to ask Miguel a question here. Yes. And I'm going to give you a bit of breaking news. Go on. Uh, because the PGMOL have replaced Darren England, who was the VAR on the game last night and Dan Cook, the assistant VAR from the same game. They've been replaced for the game between Nottingham Forest and Brentford uh, and Fulham and Chelsea today uh, and tomorrow. Um, now, Craig Pawson's now going to assume England's duties at the fourth official at the city ground. Eddie Smart will take over from Cook as assistant referee at Craven Cottage. So that's from the PGMOL. Uh, they've replaced Darren England and Dan Cook, the VAR and assistant VAR. Clearly, this is a, a story which really represents an existential crisis for the PGMOL. We're all talking about it. Our newspapers will all be making it the sole focus of our back pages tomorrow. Obviously, we've got the Ryder Cup and everything, but this is a huge story affecting every club in the Premier League, and the PGMOL are reacting very, very quickly to take action after what happened last night. They have to. It's... it's imperative that they react quickly and like you say they have so they've made a decision to relieve the two of their duties this weekend so far going forward um in terms of the statement it wasn't an apology was it it was a a statement it was an admission of error a significant human error is what they called it a factual error a factual error yes so what did you make of that in the first instance? Uh, I was actually, I must say, I was surprised the stridency of language. I was in an, an unusual situation uh, when that statement came out because it was midway through Jurgen Klopp's press conference. Uh, obviously, there'd been a long wait for that sort of clarity. Uh, Klopp had already said he knew straight away, so what they said was irrelevant. Uh, and I was actually had the, the strange distinction, I suppose, of actually saying at the Klopp, uh, this statement's just been released. What do you think of it? And having to read it out to him. And he just, I suppose, it only increased his, uh, his bafflement, I suppose. And he, as he responded, who does that help? And I suppose that's the bigger issue here with all of this in that it creates a credibility crisis. Um, and, it, I mean, especially, especially given the, whole, and the entire premise of this system is about increasing accuracy, not aiming for perfection, as even Klopp said, mm -hmm. but increasing dependability. And this just seems the complete opposite. And what's even made it worse is the inevitable and understandable attempts at transparency since then have actually created more confusion to the point that feels like the, the only way to kind of start navigating out of this crisis is basically, I suppose, just release the audio just to have complete transparency. Mm -hmm. I mean, just as you were talking there, I was kind of thinking about what this actually boils down to. And really it is just, I mean, and given all this is about clarity of communication, 
it's it's a lack of communication. It was that mm -hmm. you know in the instance uh, the, the the expectation what they, they didn't know what they were checking for, mm -hmm. and also at that point something I think about another potential issue with this, which is the ambiguity of the language. Was it just check complete. Well, why not just have it clear and say it, it, it's a goal yeah. or it's an offside? Because okay, 99% of the time that's fine. But in a, in a case like this, it shows how there is scope for completely needless error. Yeah, it's it's a bizarre situation, isn't it? Um, that the fact that the VAR team thought the goal had been given, and then, like you say, they say check complete, and then realise that they can't then go back. But then, that, I, I mean, did no one, even as they were setting up to take a free kick, is no one watching to go, hang on a second. They haven't that, given like... the goal. So could they not say to Hooper in his ear, but actually IFAB rules don't allow them, do they? Yeah, let me read this to you. It, it, the IFAB rule on the VAR principle says, if players stopped and been restarted, the referee may not undertake a review, in inverted commas, except for a case of mistaken identity or for a potential sending off offence relating to violent conduct, spitting, biting or extremely offensive and or abusive actions. That's got to change. It's archaic. You're trying to operate technology with archaic rules that handcuff yeah. the process. We, uh and even the issue with that is, I mean, it feels like kind of being beholden to the integrity of rules that are actually sort of needless at the cost of integrity to the game. And I suppose, and I think as we were talking off air, there's almost this greater issue now of, and I'm not, I must say, I'm not calling for an entire match to be replayed, say, but the, the match, they, they continue to play the game under the knowledge that this was wrong. And I, like, I have to say, I'm probably someone who's probably better disposed to the idea of VAR than most. I would prefer a move to try and get more decisions correct. But this, I suppose, just relays some of the <laughs> understandable grievances that a lot more people have about it. No it's problem. interesting you say that, that, that you wouldn't necessarily want the game to be replayed, but Howard Webb has got previous for that in terms of he's now the head of the PGMOL, and he's done that before, hasn't he? That's, yeah, that's yeah so it's come out on social media, actually, that when he was in America that that happened. That, um, I think it was uh, Kenny Dalglish's son, Paul Dalglish, that put it up. Uh, that, 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 that there was a precedent that he demanded a game replayed from the incident of the error. I suppose the only, the only issue there is then, and I suppose this is why it's a credibility crisis, and that you, if, if we start having these discussions and suddenly get into a situation where every single decision is disputed, it's kind of the problem of the precedent. Mm -hmm. But it, it does show the sort of the mess this is now in, especially given as well, one of the reasons the Premier League is most popular in the world, one of the massive factors is because of its, uh, its credibility, its, its, its reputation yes. from, from that perspective. It's interesting, isn't it? Because actually, Jurgen Klopp, I, and, and I, I think he took a little bit of umbrage against uh, Patrick Davison when he, uh, and said, you know, you're, you're quite calm about this. And, and I think what he was trying to say is, everyone else will be up in arms about this. And actually, Jurgen was very clear that he, you know, said they didn't aim to do this, no one aims to make a human error, but this doesn't help anyone, yeah, the PGMOL coming out and saying this was a human error. Yeah, I mean, the PGMOL have come out 14 times since the start of last season. And, and clarified that officials have made mistakes. Now, people may say, well, oh, it's great that they've come out and they've put their hands up. The fact is they cost clubs points. They yeah. cost managers, in some extreme cases, their jobs. It will not help Liverpool that the PGML have come out and clarified what all of us could see who are watching on TV. I think as far as uh, the PGML are concerned, I thought, sorry, as far as Jurgen Klopp is concerned, after the match, I think he spoke really well because mm. I was looking forward to, to what he was going to say. I expected him to be quite emotive and angry about it. But the facts are, and that's what makes this entire system just such a joke, we all see these things and we see there's this great injustice. And yet if a manager articulates that, he gets fined mm -hmm. by the Football Association. It's just madness. So managers have to bide their time. They mm -hmm. have to not say what they see. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a mess. I think as far as he was saying... Uh, as Jürgen was saying last night, what we need is a reasoned, rational conversation yes. about where we go from here. Because this, as we were saying before, it's a crisis for the PGMOL. We cannot continue as we were going along. Now, fair play to the PGMOL. They've taken action to remove the people whose job it was to make sure that the on-field officials had help. I think we've got to go further. We, we, you cannot now make a case for not making those conversations between the VAR and the official on the, on the field, either public in real time or immediately after the match. You've got to do one of mm. those two things because 
the transparency is the problem here. For hours after the match, everybody is surmising on what happened, when actually we would know if we could hear what was going on. And what has come out now sounds like a sanitised version of the truth, when, in fact, if it is public to everybody, everybody knows and we know whose fault it was. Um, I think that we're almost wanting to embrace technology, but not at the same time. And that's what's leading to all of these mistakes. It has to be definitive, doesn't it? This was brought in to make a definitist decision, to avoid any... Well, football has never been an exact science, ever. No. I mean, you could talk about goal line technology, yes. But there have been so many decisions that have been taken. There are loads of people across the country watching right now who have had handball decisions given against their team by referees. Another referee will say, no, it's not handball. You think about Romero against Manchester United, and then you think about Romero last week. Yeah, and you simply do not know from one week to the next what an official is going to give. So and the problem with VAR is that all it's done... We keep saying referees need help, but all VAR has done has given another level of inefficiency and unaccountability as far as referees are concerned. So, dare I say it, Miguel, is the solution to scrap VAR? I don't think that's going to happen, um, just even because this goes beyond the Premier League in England. It comes from FIFA, and they're completely committed to it. I think there's a feeling that it's gone well in most of the world, even though there's a lot of debate with a lot of other countries. I think what's probably a more realistic solution right now is, as Darren has suggested, you've got to make it as transparent as possible, which means, I suppose, a little bit like rugby, being able to hear what's actually being said. Because another problem with this, I suppose, is when... I, I, Darren's referred there to kind of a sanitised version of what's happened. Well, if there's any ambiguity or if there's even these long periods of silence, what happens is that gives ground to conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying there's any validity in conspiracy theories, but when that starts to become part of the discussion, even if it's on social media, say, that kind of poisons trust in the system. And, and that's something that actually has to be addressed as well, especially given the, the very notion of sport. I think the other thing, Vic, is... When Howard Webb came in, we kept hearing this, this phrase, breath of fresh air, uh, it's coming, it's, it's fantastic that he's, he's coming, he's going to do this and do that. I was at a conference uh, with, with Howard in the summer. Um, he was giving his support and, and promising to diversify the refereeing pool. Now, so none of us, and this is not what this show is about, calling for people to lose their jobs and stuff like that, but we do need to diversify that refereeing pool. We've got a lot, of, we've got a culture of complacency within our current refereeing pool. Um, and I have to say, sadly, there is a precedent for a situation like this where Mike Dean gave a podcast and talked, didn't he, about the match in which he knew there had been a mistake with the hair-pulling situation in the Chelsea mm -hmm. game with Anthony Taylor. But he said that I, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to put pressure on, on Anthony. Now, to be clear, we're not accusing Anthony of any wrongdoing whatsoever here. But... The fact is we have had a situation where a game has continued in the knowledge that an injustice has been committed against a football club and they've had to just accept it. How can that be the case? So, look, we've seen already White Dean Park Company with the PJ Mall. We've seen Lou, uh, Lee Mason Park Company with the uh, PJ Mall. Again, to be clear, we're not accusing them of any malfeasance whatsoever. No. But what we are saying is that as far as the PGMOL is concerned, we have had this culture that has need to be freshened up, revamped, looked at. Everybody with an interest in football knows that the PGMOL is in a situation now when it cannot continue as it is. And the action that Howard has taken so far needs to now be turbocharged. Yeah, just finally and briefly on this, there will be a review. The review process has started. You expect more through the weeks from the PGML? You, you think so. Yeah. Uh, and they, I mean, cause, uh, as, because of everything we've spoken here, I think they have to assess the protocols. The fact that we could have a situation where there was even confusion over what they were looking at. I mean, that, that's the root problem with this, really. They didn't know what they were looking at or what they were supposed to be looking for. Mm -hmm. And hence, the kind of the, the, the wrong information was, uh, was, was filtered through. 
Um, and I, I mean, Nicole, what were you in, in your paper tomorrow? Because all of our papers, we normally do the papers at this stage, yeah. right? And we say this paper's got this and that. But obviously, we have now first crack at this, and our newspapers will all sit down uh, in our conferences around about now, maybe an hour's time, and decide how we're going to take this story further tomorrow. What will your paper look at, given that you're at so the game? I mean, so I'm going to be writing exactly what I've said here. In fact, it's, it's good air uh, preparation. <laughs> uh, we, I mean, it, it's a credibility crisis. Uh, the entire the, the review needs to be looked at. Or sorry, the, uh, the the protocol needs to be reviewed, and change. I mean, again, and I, I think what what we'd say is there's got to be a push to just make this process as transparent as possible, especially given the suspicion among the kind of the, the, so many fans, so many supporters still don't buy into VR. They want rid of it. This, this is the bigger conversation. So they need to kind of address that. And the way you address that is by, I suppose putting up all communication. Yeah, I, I, listen, I know we've got to move on, just very quickly. Yesterday, I, I said on social media, I feel for the PGMOL, and they came for me on social media, as you would expect. But, you know, I, I do want to clarify that, because just like in any organisation, if somebody makes a mistake, it doesn't mean any everybody within that organisation should be tarred with the same brush. I think as far as the PGML are concerned, there are good people who want to move that organisation forward. And that starts from the top. And I say that having had first-hand conversations with Howard Webb. He wants to move the PGML on to ensure that we don't have situations like this. Mm -hmm. To do that, he is going to need to purge that organisation and diversify that talent roster so that we have a, a, a much more forward-thinking operation than the one we have now because at the moment it's mired in complacency and errors that are bringing the whole operation into disrepute. Yeah, and I guess with such a glaring error, it's a good place to start.